Hey there. So if you're watching this video, you've probably had a few bad experiences in group projects where you end up doing literally all the work or you just spend half your time chasing up your teammates to see when they're finishing off their sections. Either way, it's so frustrating to be paired with a bad group where you end up carrying all your teammates. So I'm gonna hopefully share with you some tips that help you out. I've kind of developed them over the years of having bad group after bad group where the teammates maybe aren't bad workers per se, but just aren't very proactive. So hopefully these can help you out so that you don't end up getting a terrible grade in your group projects. Firstly, you wanna allocate roles from the very beginning. It's okay if no one feels comfortable being the leader, you don't have to have a leader, but if someone does, if that is you, then I do recommend putting yourself forward. If you're watching this video, you probably end up becoming somewhat of a leader anyway. It can just help to say this from the get-go so it doesn't then feel like halfway through the project you start taking all the reins. But at the same time, you don't need a leader, like I said. What you do need to do though is make sure that there is a clear distribution of roles and responsibilities. If there are already clear-cut sections for your project or presentation, then from there you can just vote, see if anyone has a certain preference for anything. I do recommend doing this. You don't want anyone ending up with a section they really don't want, that's only gonna make them work less. But at the same time, if you have those members who are constantly indecisive and always hit you with the, I don't mind, then just choose for them or just give them the last available section. But if there aren't clear cut sections and you actually need to come up with them yourself, again, really make the most of this first meeting when you're all grouped together to brainstorm and come up with a really rough outline and some ideas for what you will discuss. The best way to do this is to come up with your overall hypothesis, thesis or presentation title first, because from there, the sections will kind of flow a bit more. And what you'll probably find is naturally through the brainstorming session, people who come up with ideas are likely to then volunteer to do that section. So the sectioning off should be quite natural and easy. But again, if you have some teammates that don't contribute anything to that first discussion, then again, you can just choose their sections for them, make sure they understand and articulate that they know what they will then have to do. Next, determine a main method of communication. This is really, really important, regardless of how simple it sounds. I was at an international school and now I'm at a very international university. There are gonna be students that don't have access to certain platforms of social media. And of course, in any situation, people will have preferences. So you wanna make sure everyone is on the same page about which platform they wanna use and they know that they're gonna see the messages frequently. So for example, WhatsApp is always a great one. This way, no one should have an excuse for taking hours or days to reply, as opposed to if you just relied on sending emails or Microsoft Teams messages, because as you can imagine, there's probably a lot of people that take days to check their emails. You wanna make sure everyone is constantly on track and keeping up to date with what is going on. If you can, have a set time and day to meet. I haven't done this in all my projects, but in the past few I did, and it really, really made it so much better. It's made such a difference, because let's be honest, if you don't have a very proactive group, they're probably not gonna keep up to date with where their sections are, and they're probably gonna leave things to the last minute. With a weekly meeting, or perhaps more frequently, if you don't have a lot of time, you can keep everyone on track and actually see, okay, we're meeting for a second week, how's everyone's sections doing? If someone hasn't even started yet, you wanna make sure they have for the next meeting and or use that meeting as a work session. I know during COVID, obviously, all my group projects were all done entirely online, which was very tricky, but we would have a meeting where we set about an hour where we could discuss where we all were and then use the rest of that hour to get work done. This worked so well because whilst it wasn't a bad group, there were definitely members that perhaps didn't, weren't really doing a lot or claimed they were very busy with other modules. And so having this time as its own class or seminar forced everyone to get into that productive zone, work, 
If someone's not doing a lot of work because maybe they're just a bit confused, this gives them the opportunity to ask everyone else questions and help. So I really recommend doing this. And if you are meeting in person, it's often handy to maybe have the meeting right after the class the presentation's for. Some people may have to travel to campus or to class, so this way you want to make sure it's really easy for everyone to attend. Next, and probably the best point, especially for giving presentations, make sure you practice numerous times before your actual presentation. There are two sections to this practice. The first is timing. For most presentations, there is a time limit and you will be marked down if you exceed this time. So you really wanna make sure that your overall presentation is succinct, and to do that, you want to make sure each person is presenting for the roughly same amount of time. I use the timer function to time the overall presentation and then the lap function to time each person's section. This is a really great non-confrontational way to give people feedback if their section is really long. This has often happened and I get for a lot of us, it's a bit awkward or you don't want to be the person to point them out and say, hey, everyone else presented for five minutes, you presented for 10. Instead, you can just show them objectively, hey, your section went five minutes over your time limit. Do you think maybe you could cut some points out? It's in everyone's best interest to present well. So you wanna make sure by the end of it, your presentation flows really well and is under the time limit. So just keep practicing until you get there. Leading on from that, make sure the presentation itself flows very well. I'm pretty sure any criteria you're gonna have for a presentation is going to include structure. So you will be marked down if your presentation doesn't flow very well and your teacher, I promise you, will be able to tell if your presentation is a coherent presentation or if it's just three or four individual sections loosely tied together. So make sure you just have somewhat of a segue between each point so that it all works well together. And also visually, make sure everything is formatted exactly the same. Recently, I've just been using specific templates so that automatically people are using the same font and the same color scheme. But if you wanna make your own one, what I used to do is just have a temporary slide at the very top that has the font, the font size and the color scheme and anything else you wanna make note of so that people can refer to that when they're formatting their own slides. Again, this is a good non-confrontational way of keeping people in line because then if someone still just has their slide in random font, which they probably will, someone's gotta do it, it then won't be quite so awkward for you then to say, hey, I noticed your slides weren't in the same font as ours, so I just went ahead and changed it for you or ask them to change it if you feel a bit awkward touching their slides. Less of a tip, more of just a reminder and a motivator. Take group projects, specifically difficult ones, as great life lessons and skills training. This is great training for life after school and university because unfortunately, when you get into the workspace, you'll probably still have the same sort of issues. There are always going to be people that have differing opinions, that don't carry their weight, or who are just difficult to work with in a group setting. If you've handled these group projects really well, learned to move through them and still get good marks, then this is going to shine through when you then apply to jobs and when you work in different organisations. So this is a really valuable professional skill for you to develop. So maybe take it on the chin a little bit and look on the bright side. And also, if you do take more of a leadership role, this is a great demonstration of a leadership skill that you are developing. Because even if you're not overtly the leader, you've definitely been keeping everyone in line and ensuring that the presentation or project is the best that it can be. Unfortunately, you can't seem to go through school, college and uni without having at least one difficult group. So if you can find ways to make the process a bit easier and less mentally strenuous on you, then it's really worth it. So as we enter the new academic term, I hope that you're a little bit more motivated for group projects that aren't just gonna weigh you down, but instead push you to develop your own leadership and team working skills and still get a great grade. Thank you again for watching and happy studying.